evil thoughts are transformed into hell beings. So both you think, how can I get famous? How can I succeed? I start a riot, murder people, set fires, and loot the streets, and good thoughts into heavenly beings. Oh, you say I want to help people. You have no money. Here is a million to help you get by. Or you think no one makes offerings to the Americans who have left home. I make an offering. Don't wait for America, such an affluent nation, to allow its new Buddhist sangha to starve to death, transform into the heavens. Wisdom is transformed into the upper realms, and delusion into the lower realms. With intelligence, you go up, but if you are deluded, you fall. The superior one mounts on high. The petty person travels a lower road. The transformations of the self nature are extremely many, and yet the confused person, unawakened to that truth, continually gives rise to evil and walks evil paths. The confused person's every thought is evil. That person mistreats me. I'm going to ruin him. The great master Shen Xiao was one who walked evil paths by repeatedly sending hide killers after the sixth patriarch. Turn a single thought back to goodness, and wisdom is produced. That is the transformation body of the Buddha within the self nature. Do you understand? If you do, you are a good knowing advisor. If you don't, you are an evil knowing advisor. Wouldn't you rather be a good knowing advisor? Sutra, good knowing advisors. The Dharma body of the Buddha is basically complete. To see your nature in every thought is the reward body of the Buddha. When the reward body thinks and calculates, it is the transformation body of the Buddha, awakened and cultivated by your own efforts, the merit and virtue of your self nature that is truly taking refuge. The skin and flesh of the physical body are like an inn to which you cannot return. Simply awaken to the three bodies of the, your self nature, and you will understand the self nature Buddha. Commentary: You yourself must wake up and cultivate on your own. Do not babble intellectual Zen all day, yak yak yak, talking about never talking but never practicing. Talking a yard is not as good as practicing an inch. If you do not. But do nothing but talk. You are cheating people. So pay no attention to whether my lectures are good or bad. Look instead to see if I have ever cheated you. The sixth patriarch tells you to awaken to the three bodies of your self nature. So you say, then taking refuge with myself is to take refuge with my body. No, if you take refuge with your body. You are just adding a head on top of a head, like Yanadatta in the Suragama Sutra, who ran everywhere looking for his head. Your physical body is an inn where you, your self nature, temporarily dwells. Therefore, you cannot say my body is me. Your body is not you. Then, is it someone else? No, your body is yours. It is not mine or his. It is yours, but it is not you. Don't I always say, say that if you live in a house, you can say the house is yours, but you certainly cannot say the house is you. If you say that it is you, everyone will say he doesn't even know who he is. He thinks his house is him, but it's just a thing. Your body is like a house. Don't mistake it for being you. Understand? Don't take refuge with the physical body. Take refuge with your self nature. Awaken to the clear, pure Dharma body Dharma. Pure Dharma body Buddha, the perfect, full reward body Buddha, and the hundred thousand myriad transformation body Buddhas within your own nature. By understanding the Buddha of your self nature, you may perfect the three bodies. Sutra. I have a verse without marks. If you can recite and memorize it, 
it will wipe away accumulated ends of confusion and offenses as soon as the words are spoken. The verse runs, A confused person will foster blessings, but not cultivate the way, and say to practice for the blessings is practice for the way. While giving and making offerings brings blessings without limit, it is in the mind that the three evils have their origin. By seeking blessings, you may wish to obliterate offenses. But in the future, though you are blessed, offenses still remain. You ought to simply strike the evil conditions from your mind by true repentance and reform within your own self-nature. A sudden awakening, the true repentance and reform of the great Rehigo, you must cast out the devil and practice the right to be without offense. To study the way, always look within your own self-nature. You are then the same in kite and lineage as all Buddhas. Our Patriarch passed along only this sudden teaching, wishing that all might see the nature and be of one substance. In the future, if you wish to find the Dharma body, detach yourself from Dharma marks and inwardly wash the mind. Strive to see it for yourself and do not waste your time, for when the final thought has stopped, your life comes to an end. Enlightened to the great vehicle, you can see your nature, so reverently join your palms and seek it with all your heart. Commentary, don't be nervous, continued the great master. I have some good news. Don't you know I have a verse without marks? Do you want to hear it? If you do, I recite. If not, I just put it away. Yes, everyone exclaimed. We definitely do want to hear it. Please be compassionate and recite it. If you can learn this verse by heart, the master said it will cause the confusions and crumbs accumulated from beginning this time, passing through limitless ages, life after life, to be eradicated immediately. Where will they go? Do you mean you still want to look for them? What a waste of effort. A confused person will foster blessing, but if you tell him to cultivate with the Bible, he won't do it. Although there are not many students here, those present are extremely sincere. They do not fear leg pain, back pain, any pain, whatever. I will endure this pain and cultivate the way, even if it means giving up my life. They say, such rare determination makes me happy, but I don't show my happiness is joking with you all day. It's not that kind of happiness, it's true happiness. Deluded people say to practice for the blessings is practice of the way. This is like the Emperor Wu of Liang who said, I have taken pictures across and have built many temples. I have made offerings and practiced charity and arranged vegetarian banquets. What great merit I must have is probably even greater than Shakyamuni Buddha's. Giving and making offerings brings limitless blessings, but the origin of the three evils is within the mind. What are the three evils? Greed, hate, and delusion. Greed, I think i eat a few more peanuts and then I won't be hungry today. Hate, hey, who ate all the peanuts? Delusion, hating the one who ate the peanuts which makes you unreasonable and stupid. Cultivating blessings while neglecting wisdom has made you so stupid that you can't quit overeating and even have the gall to speak of it as a bitter practice. You cannot get rid of offenses by cultivating blessings because although you obtain the blessings, the offenses still remain. What should you do is read the mind of all evil conditions, i.e. thoughts of greed, hate, delusion, jealousy, obstructiveness, conceit, obsequiousness, viciousness, and deceitfulness. But there are my old friends, you say. We've been together for millions of years. 
how can I part with them? Fine, if you can't part with them, then there's nothing to do but follow them down to hell. To practice true repentance and reform is to understand the great vehicle and immediately get rid of all evil thoughts. It is very clear no analogies are needed. You truly repent when you get rid of the judgment and practice the right. As the sixth patriarch verse says, then you may walk down the straight and great bright road and be without offense. To study the way, always look within the self-nature. Ask yourself, what am I doing? Am I acting like a person or a ghost, an animal, a horse or a cow? You are what you do. If you act like a Buddha, you are a Buddha. The Buddha practices friendliness, compassion, sympathetic joy and giving. His compassion is genuine, not false and greedy. He never thinks, if I am a little compassionate to you, you will be greatly compassionate to me. There are no unsurreal motives in the compassion I have for you. I would not give you a brick and expect a piece of jade in return. Cultivators, turn the light around, reverse its illumination and ask yourself, Am I thinking like a demon or a Buddha? Am I selfish or generous, self-seeking or charitable? If you are charitable, you are the same in kind as all the Buddhas. If you act like a Buddha, you are a Buddha. But if you act like a ghost, how can you be a Buddha? By our patriarch, the sixth patriarch means Bodhidharma who transmitted only the sudden teaching Dharma door because he wanted everyone to see the Buddha nature and realize the Buddha way together. If you wish to find the Dharma body, then separate yourself from all monks. Do not be attached, jealous, obstructive, ignorant, afflicted, or snobbish. You cannot think as the Buddha did in the heavens and below. I alone am honored. The Dharma Sutra says, one who has left all marks is called a Buddha, apart from marks and unattached to self, and to dramas the mind ground is cleansed. Strive to see it for yourself and go forward with heroic vigor. You'll never succeed in if you're lazy and waste your time saying, wait, I can't give it tomorrow, wait, I translate tomorrow. Even at lunch time, you say, wait, I'll eat later. Wait, wait until it's time to die and King Yama won't listen to you when you say, wait, I'll die later. If you are truly free, you come and go in birth and death and yet are not subject to birth and death. King Yama has no control over you. This is like the third patriarch, Sun San who said, you see others sit in lotus posture to die and think it's special. Watch this and grabbed a tree branch with one hand and went to Nirvana. Just hanging there, wasn't he free? If you wait until your dying breath to cultivate, it will be too late. For when the final thought has stopped, your life comes to an end. Earlier in chapter 4, didn't the sutra say that you should not cut off your thought? Because when the last thought is cut off, you die and then undergo rebirth in some other place. At the time of death, there is nothing, no fame, no riches. Both your hands will be empty and you'll be forced to put down what you can't put down. No matter how dear your loved ones are, you'll have to, have to part with them. Enlightened to the great vehicle, you can see the nature. So reverently draw your palms and seek it with all your heart. See the nature and humbly seek to follow the unsurpassed way. Sutra, the master said, good knowing advisors, all of you should take up this verse and cultivate according to it. If you see your nature at the moment, these words are spoken. Even if we are a thousand miles apart, you will always be by my side. If you do not awaken at the moment of speaking, then face to face we are a thousand miles apart. So why did you bother to come from so far? Take care of yourself and go well. 
The United Assembly heard this drama and there were none who did not awaken. They received it with delight and practiced in accord with it. Commentary I think the Sikh Vajrak liked to talk and so he delivered this platform sutra. If he hadn't liked to speak, he wouldn't have taught any sutra at all. Now I am teaching it to all of you. You are quite intelligent, the master said, and you have good rules. We have an affinity which goes back for many lifetimes and many ages, and therefore we have met here today. Of course, there were no foreigners in the master's drama assembly. They were all Chinese. That I have met so many Americans must be a case of even greater affinity. If you understand the words I have recited, said the master, you will get rid of the judgment, practice the right, and be without offense. And although we are a thousand miles apart, you will be right beside me. If my disciples understand and remember the sutras I have explained, they will be right beside me. But if instead they take advantage of external circumstances, or get jealous and angry, they will have studied the way in vain. If they don't understand this verse, then even if we should stand face to face, we should still be a thousand miles apart. If they believe in me, although we are a thousand miles apart, we are face to face. Are you trying to make people believe in you? You ask. No, why should I want you to believe in me? You are better off believing in yourself. Because if you can't leave it, you do it for yourself. You don't eat to make me full. All I do is teach you the methods. If you have come all this way just to be a thousand miles from me, why did you bother to come at all? Take care of yourselves. Don't look down on yourself and say, I'm not going to cultivate. I'm nothing but a dog anyway. See yourself as a person, not a dog, and go to a good place, not a bad one.